Welcome to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, home of the 2005 NCAA College World Series. It's game two between Florida and Texas and is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. There are places we come across in life, those extraordinary places, places that just seem to shine. The cathedrals, the shrines that safeguard the memories of generations of excellence, slices of time that shape and define what we know as greatness. And with them come the legions, they travel, they arrive, and they preserve and protect this magnificent place. In game one, it was Texas that shined, pushing Florida's back to the wall in this best of three. It's how bad do we want it? You know, guys are gonna step up for us to be successful. We don't ever, ever give up. You play hard, pitch by pitch, inning by inning. The Longhorns are one win away from a sixth national title and leaving yet another memorable stamp at Rosenblatt. We get to do it one more time, you know, for the national championship. It's great. Today, these final two teams will either advance history or prolong a signature year in Omaha, Nebraska. Patrick, along with Harold Reynolds, it's great to have you with us from Omaha. Texas has a chance to close it out today. They got brilliant pitching again from Adrian Alanis yesterday. The staff ERA at the College World Series, you have to use a microscope to find it, 1.25. They've been ridiculous. And, and, you know, the thing that's been so impressive, Adrian Alanis last night was really the epitome of what Texas has done. They get ahead with the breaking ball, and they throw the fastball to put guys away. Tremendous pitching, and they pitch clutch in the situation to get the jet ball to Jay Brent Cox and it's all about go. Today's starter Kyle McCulloch, seven innings, seven strikeouts. That's what? A strikeout an inning? So we'll look and see how he does uh, uh, his performance today. Gators have to find a way to find the bat rack. They are hitting only 215 at the College World Series. That won't get it done and they're out of time. Well, we really won't. We talked about their power, but yesterday they started in the eighth inning with a push bunt, a walk, and then a dribbler up the middle for a base hit to drive in too. They've got to try to manufacture their offense earlier in the game instead of waiting until the eighth inning to try to get it going. So we'll see if they're able to change some things up and, and see what they do in their little recipe today. We expect to have every angle and every sound covered from the College World Series, including Stroh Motion, the Hat Cam, Sky Cam, you name it, we got it. Got him! We've got fan interference. The catcher over there attempting to make the play. I believe the catcher could have made the catch. It will be a scorcher this afternoon in Omaha, a 3 o'clock local start. Very warm temperatures for the Florida Gators and the Texas Longhorns. Florida is the visiting team today. Texas will be the home team, and here is your Sonic Florida starting lineup. Corsaletti will lead it off. He's 364 on the year. Followed by Adam Davis, the sophomore second baseman. Matt Laporta, the nation's home run leader, bats third. He has 26 long balls this year. Catcher Brian Girolam in his fourth. Hitting fifth and playing third, Brandon MacArthur. Solid hitting Brian LeClaire will hit seventh. Gavin Dickey next in the lineup. He plays left field. Justin Torty is the shortstop and Stephen Barton the DH is the number nine manner in uh, number nine hitter in the Florida order Kyle McCulloch the sophomore right hander with 11 wins to his credit this year 
will take the hill for the Texas Longhorns. Their staff ERA for the season now is down to 2.81 for the College World Series 1.25. They have allowed five earned runs five in 36 innings. It's incredible. They're around the plate. They throw a lot of strikes. See Coach Augie Greedo and you look at his numbers there. But Kyle McCullough is going to throw you 80. He's going to throw a fastball about 86 to 90 miles an hour. He's got two different breaks on the ball. Now he'll throw a slider and a good curve. But sometimes it's harder or softer depending on the situation. You'll see a lot of breaking balls to lefties. It's kind of the scouting report. Augie with the impressive numbers and and it's not bad to send him out there to the mound. So looking good. Texas with a chance to win its sixth national championship. Augie Garrido would get his numbers up to five at three at Cal State Fullerton. One at Texas and Corsoletti leads it off. Five for 19 in Omaha. And one of only five Gators ever to have 100 hits in a season. So let it quickly ahead in the count, 2 and 0. Well, if you look at the radar gun, he's up to 92. Now, this is a guy who pitches between 86 and 90, so he's got a little adrenaline flowing, no doubt, throwing a little harder today. Missed outside with a fastball, 3 and 0. Now, I think you make him pitch here. I'd take 3 0, and I would take 3 1 if he went there, and make him, make him have to work. Corsoletti is the only senior position player on this ball club. And usually teams that have guys stick around for their last year that get out here really have an advantage because of that experience factor. And that they have been in the program a long, long time and know how to play the way the coach wants. And there's the breakdown on the Gators, the young ball club. This one's tapped right back to the mound, and McCulloch will report an easy first out on a one to three play. Here's the umpiring crew for today's game Jim Garman behind the plate, Bill Davis, David Wiley, Andy Eve, Steve Manders, and Mike Conlon, the rest of the crew. And on the whole, we have had tremendous umpiring out here. Part of our look at the umpire's work is hat cam. Did some great shots down at second base. And Adam Davis stands in. He's hitting only 182 in Omaha. But has two home runs and has driven in six. He's supplied a lot of the power. Along with Laporta. Who was on deck? We got a great offensive day today with the wind blowing out. Great sky to, to hit. You're going to see the ball. It's awful hot. The ball's going to carry. Should be a good offensive day. Already 100 on the field. We'll have to watch pitch counts because that will start to wear on these starters. Yes, it will. And, I, and it looks like McCullough's got pretty good control of the changeup. You see the wind, the flags blowing in the background. He's thrown two changeups and fastball counts and has been able to get a couple strikes on it. There's another one. And struck him out. Two gone in the first. So when you get a guy in a good groove and he's throwing a changeup and able with that good motion early in the game, look at this change right here. That looks like a fastball coming out of the hand, and that is a very difficult pitch to hit. See the movement down. It's a good pitch. End up swinging over it and getting absolutely nothing. And now Laporta, who has two homers and six RBIs, and has shown tremendous power out here. Not only has he won the national home run title with 79 RBIs this year, he is one shy of the school record for the Florida Gators. Yeah, he's been hovering around that 330 mark all season too. You see him at 332 today. That's that's impressive when you put up those kind of power numbers and a high average. And somebody has got to get blistering hot for Florida. They have one batter hitting 300 and that's it. Ball. 
And all they have seen out here, all anybody has seen from Texas, is guys who just come out and mow them down. Well, you know, you throw they throw a lot of strikes. And when you throw strikes and you get ahead of hitters, it's tough. Now Laporta's finally got a good hitting count. Let's see what he does with it. Too high. Laporta issues his first walk. To bring Jerome to the plate, the hard hitting catcher has eight home runs this year. Well, what we're seeing right now is a good fastball and a changeup. Now, McCullough, I said he throws 86 to 90. I'm hearing now he can get up as hard as 95 on a good day, so that's a big difference. 93. That one buzzed in there. The numbers on Jeroleman, who is pretty good contact hitter as well as that eight home run power, has a solo home run in the series <laughs> among his four hits. Right, he clearly was pitching around Laporta. He threw Laporta a bunch of balls, threw him a 3 1 changeup. So if you want to beat me, you go ahead and beat me on this. And then obviously comes right back going after Jeroleman. Yeah, nobody has really wanted much of Laporta. Mm -mm. And rightfully so. When you're hitting around 330 and you got you're the nation's leading home run hitter and you got almost 80 ribbies, you're not going to see a whole lot of pitches to hit. 26 home runs in 70 games. <laughs> not bad. Put you right up there at the top of anybody's list. This is what I don't get right here, though, Mike. You got the hitter 0 and 2. You got the guy at first you want on first because he's not going to run. Go get the hitter. Foul back. Count rides at 0 and 2. Only a couple of real threats to run in this Florida lineup. And Matt Laporta, not one of them. They got him thrown to first again. Guess not. Foul back on the screen. It's an interesting sign. Looked like he was, I guess he wanted it up more on the fastball. And sometimes that's just a predetermined sign. You give it to him when he's walking around out there, and you don't give the sign. You just tell him, here's where I want it at. Okay. He wants a fastball up. There it was, and a fake start by Laporta. And, and to me, that's a great pitch. I mean, if he swings, you get a swing and miss. If not, it's almost like a pitch out, with, especially with Tea Garden back there, one of the best catchers in the country. Oh. Just missed. Crowd certainly thought it was a strike. Partisan Texas gathering here at Rosenblatt. They got a great fall. And here's a good look at that last pitch. It's going to be a changeup. And that's a tough pitch to take. Looked like it was out of the strike zone a little low, though. Mm -hmm. That one isn't called strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning for Colin McCulloch. One left at the end of a half inning. Nothing, nothing. Introducing the 300 horsepower Acura RL. With voice activated technology and super handling all wheel drive, power can be shifted front to rear, side to side, and while cornering, the outside rear wheel is accelerated for dramatically improved handling in all weather conditions. The all crowd basking in the sun here at Rosenblatt as Florida taking on Texas, game two of the best of three. Texas already leads it one nothing. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Well, Mike, you know, head coach Pat McMahon of the Florida Gators told us if Florida wants to be successful, then their senior Jeff Corsoletti has got to be productive. The coach knows what he's talking about. In the last two games, the Florida Gators have lost here in Omaha. Corsoletti has gone 0 for 4 in both of them. Jeff told me before the game he's had problems getting good swings at the plate. He hopes his luck turns around today. Now, most of the Gators I spoke with feel all the pressure is on that Longhorns dugout over 
over there. Corsoletti said it best. He said, no one expected us to be here. We proved them wrong. Now we're going to prove them wrong again in this elimination situation. Mike? All right, Aaron, thanks very much. Let's take a look at our Sonic starting lineups for the Texas Longhorns under Augie Garrido. Nick Peoples will lead it off, the right fielder. Drew Stubbs, the fastest man on the field, will bat second and play center field. Seth Johnson, a 380 hitter, is third in the lineup. Hot hitting Will Crouch, the DH, moves up into the four hole. Chance Wheelis will hit fifth today and play first base. Taylor Teagarden is the catcher, he'll bat sixth. Carson Kiner drops down to the seventh spot at 317. David Marol will play third base and bat eighth, and uh, Robbie Hudson, the second baseman, will hit ninth in the order today for the Longhorns, who come in 55 and 16. They finished third in the Big 12 behind Nebraska and Baylor. Brian Ball from Punta Gorda, Florida, gets the start in an elimination game for the Gators. He is seven and four, making his 17th start of the season and he'll face peoples to lead it off. Well you're going to see a good fastball from him low eight high 80s low 90s right in that range and he's going to be around the plate and runners get on they do a tremendous job of holding runners close. This one is hit through the hole in the left field for a base hit as peoples leads it off with a single. Keep an eye on Florida's defense. They were a little shaky yesterday after being solid through the early part of the College World Series. Three errors in last night's ball game against Texas. Now they'll have to draw the infield in for Drew Stubbs. And if you're not familiar with Augie Garrido's style of baseball, they want to score first and will do anything to scratch out a run. And this is a perfect start because Stubbs, a good bunter, will be up there looking to move peoples over. Doesn't reveal what he's going to do on the throw over to first. He already has four sacrifices here in Omaha. And you have to make the play well because he runs so fast. Pulled the bat back and takes it for a ball. It's a, it's a good advantage right here for Texas because both do run very well. You look at the the graphic here. The top two are the most important. The leadoff guys reached 13 times and attempted 11 months and been able to move him over. And that that to me is the, the key. Only play is to first. The sacrifice is successful by Stubbs. And that was a little bit different because he's bunting for a base hit in that situation. And, and what I mean by that is, you're, as the hitter, you're saying bet, bunt for a hit, or you get the sacrifice. And with Drew Stubbs, you don't want to just have him square around and just waste in that bat. You want him to go ahead and have an opportunity to make an attempt at bunting that ball and then getting him on over from there. If he was bunting for a hit, it wasn't a very good bunt. No, it wasn't. He, he ended up actually getting caught in between, not getting the bat head out and put it down third base. But a runner in scoring position for Johnston at 380. And Johnston delivers. Line drive to left, right in front of Dickey. He comes up throwing. They'll have to hold the runner at third. That ball was hit so hard, even Peoples, who runs well, had no chance to score. Well, that's a tough read as a runner at second base. This ball hangs up there a long time. Now, this is a line drive, yes, but you looked, it looked almost like Dickey was going to get to it. Now, this is interesting. The third base coach looked like he was waving him, but people took it upon himself to stop. I think he made the right decision. Yeah, I, I, it was a pretty big challenge there. Now you got the heart of their order coming up, and all these guys are swinging the bat pretty good. Crouch is hitting 500 in the College World Series, 8 for 16. His last 12 games, he's hitting 5-11 with three home runs. He is just pounding everything. So a huge opportunity for Texas. The infield is back, looking for a double play, up at first and third. Now here's a look at what Peoples was uh, 
looking at. Now watch the third base coach. He freezes as it comes around. Watch the third base coach. He's waving it. But Peoples uh, knew he, how much he had hesitated, so he took it upon himself to stop. Oh, he's also watching the play instead of watching his coach. Yeah. That play works once a year, so they continue to. Well, it works when you got a guy that's going to be stealing because you you can't wait to see if he's going to fake and go to third. Once you left see the leg lifted, you're taking off. It's, a, it's almost a guess. Hit to short. One. Great time. Double play. What a job. Tony Adam Davis. Tremendous pivot at second base onto Laporta. A double play that gets him out of a first inning jam. The Gators react defensively and do it beautifully. We have played one in Omaha at the College World Series at Rosenblatt. Tied at nothing. Nothing. Let's check in with Kyle Peterson. Kyle. Thank you, Mike. The Texas starter today, Kyle McCulloch. When you look at him and Adrian Allen, there's a couple differences step or really stick out. The one thing is the use of his changeup. We've seen it so far today. The second thing is his ability really to throw that fastball a little bit harder than Allen is does. We'll see that fastball get up close to 95. We saw him bump 94 last game. But the pitch selection that he had against Tulane. 44% fastballs, 41% breaker balls, 15% changeup. So he can mix it up just like Alanis did. And a little uh, tip of the cap to Kyle Peterson, who was playing hurt today, yesterday. <laughs> he took a shot on the leg and has uh, a huge mouse, and he has so much class and dignity, he wasn't going to tell us and complain about it. So uh, I was going to tell, though. He's a better man than I am. Oh, yeah, Harold, I wanted to thank you for talking to me right away so I couldn't run down in the tunnel <laughs> hey. and just sit right out here and take it. I, I wish we had that played back. We got so many cameras, you're lucky we missed it. <laughs> he had a seam mark. Mark on his pant leg. That ball hit him so hard yeah. yesterday. McCulloch, who threw 23 pitches in the first inning, falls behind MacArthur here, who leads it off in the bottom of the second. The young man who was simply lucky to be alive and able to walk and talk, let alone being able to play baseball again after three brain surgeries after he was attacked by someone he didn't know at a restaurant sucker punched and knocked unconscious was in a coma and really is not back anywhere near to what his skill level was in high school as a ball player drafted by the Minnesota Twins in the fifth round and and he was projected a high pick and it's still taking about a year and a half to even get back to, to playing baseball period and be able to walk. It's an incredible story. And regardless of what he does on the field, just you look at him, he's an inspiration to everybody. Just the fact that he's out moving around. He goes down on strikes, the third strikeout here in an inning and a third for Kyle McCulloch. The Gators are giving them a different look, though. A couple guys have tried to bunt. Last yesterday, they sat around. They were almost 0 2 every at bat without doing anything until the eighth inning. LeClaire hits it wide of first. Wheelis comes up and throws to McCulloch covering. Alanese was just magnificent yesterday. And the seven plus. That's what they're looking for seven plus or seven flat innings and then Jay Brent Cox comes in and it's over he leads the nation in saves He's had 105 career appearances tying Houston Street. So you know as a starter you go out there and give him seven innings you got a pretty good shot at winning a ball game. Look at Jay Brent Cox right there on the bench. Gavin Dickey is the batter with nobody on two outs here in the Florida second. It's an elimination game for the Gators and head coach Pat McMahon who was the SEC coach of the year this year just had tremendous ball club as he continues to build this program. Well, Gavin. The same kind of success he had at Old Dominion Mississippi yeah. State. He's a, it, Pat's been fantastic. Everywhere he's gone. I just love his temperament the way he yeah. is so approachable and 
I told him yesterday he's an ambassador for the game of baseball. You love to be Absolutely. around people like that. And his first chance with the Gators and the Gators first chance to play for a national title. They're the only school in the country in the last 10 years. He's had a chance at the men's baseball championship. A football championship and a men's basketball championship. Wow, that's impressive. Three and two. Struck him out. Four strikeouts in two innings for Kyle McCulloch. The Texas pitching continues to be brilliant. Inning and a half here at the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. Here's Kyle Peterson with more on Brian Ball, the starter for the Gators. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Brian Ball, a guy who at the beginning of the season for this Gator staff was their ace. And as the season went on, stayed in the weekend rotation, but was bumped back to the three spot. Saw him earlier in this College World Series, a guy that relies a ton on the ground ball out. This was his last time out against Arizona State. You're going to see fastball slider. He's going to throw some splitters, too, but most of the time I throw it to left handers. With only one left hander, Chance Wheelers in this Texas lineup, you probably won't. Won't see many of those ahead in the count and see a lot of sliders behind an account and see a lot of fastballs. And Kyle, he lost that start against Arizona State, went six innings, gave up four hits and four runs, got out of a first inning jam here on a double play ball, as you so correctly pointed out, with being a ground ball pitcher, the double play can really get him out of some jams. And the way Texas is hitting, he might be facing more. Chance Wheelis. Bad shoulder and all is just hung in there throughout the College World Series. He has four hits, including a home run, a dramatic walk off shot that beat Baylor. And if you weren't with us earlier, this team beat Baylor twice after losing to them four times during the year. Baylor really had their number, but Texas won them when it counted. Through the hole in the left field, the third base hit for Texas. Hey, Kyle, when you know the type of ball that Texas plays, and the leadoff guy gets on, and now they're going to bunt here more than likely and move him up. What kind of pressure does that put on the pitcher? Well, it puts pressure on him, but at the, at the same time, you, I mean, you can just focus on throwing a fastball down the middle and letting him bunt it. I mean, there's no sense in trying to trick him because you're probably not going to throw it by him. So throw the fastball, let him bunt it. He bunts it hard enough, get the out at second. But it kind of gives you some time ahead of time to know what you're going to do because you know they're going to bunt. Then in your mind, you can kind of take everything else out of it. Taylor T. Garden is the catcher with Wheelis at first. Everybody knows how to bunt on this club. A good one down the first baseline. And Ball got away with a throw that was a little wide. Well, that's an excellent bunt. You know the third baseman's playing in, so your option is to bunt it towards the first baseman because he's holding that base runner, and he does a great job of it. Nice reaction by Laporta to make the grab at first base. Now Carson Kiner. If you the just, number seven hitter will get a chance to drive in a run. If you just keep shooting at the goal, eventually you're going to score. I mean, they continue to put guys in scoring position. And when you're able to do that, it changes the whole game. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Augie Garrido has always believed in it, says the more pressure you apply, the more mistakes the other guys make. And this year, first in the Big 12 in sacrifices, second in stolen bases. The other hallmarks, pitching and defense, the fewest errors in the Big 12. They got away with one. Boy, right didn't they ever. Brian Ball went ahead and delivered the pitch, and his shortstop, Justin Torty, is standing on second base. The left side of the infield was open for the taking. And Torty broke with the backdoor play in daylight. And it left the whole left side of the infield open. I mean, if Kiner hits a routine ground ball, he runs forever. Oh! Yeah, he really, really would. That ball strike. I mean, a three hopper to short scores a run. Yeah. I mean, anytime a pitcher sees that, he's got to step off and and allow your defense to be set. That's a huge hole. Plus, he got a fastball right down the middle.
One and one to Kiner. <coughs> Wheelis is getting a big lead out there, and he's almost in a territory where you want to try to keep him close. Hit toward short. Tordy charges and throws. Two gone. Well, he had set two pitches earlier. You got to run. Absolutely. That's, that's what you're talking about with that whole hole vacated over there. Now David Marol, a young man who has impressed everybody out here in spite of a low batting average, which has risen here in Omaha to 241 because he's five for 12 here, hitting 417 in the series, had three hits last night, including a home run. And it's just a vacuum cleaner down at third and has a really good swing. Yeah, I think he's going to be a pretty good pro player. He's 6'2, 215. He's a big kid. He's got great footwork. And you know he's going to be get stronger, and he's already got 10 home runs this season. So it's going to be he's going to be a good pro, I think. Hit outside of third into the hole. Base hit one nothing Texas. Well, he's the steal of the draft in my mind. He went to 23rd round. And if you're thinking about having defense, here's a good look at the ball. He just hooks it and gets on top of a breaking pitch and finds a hole. Morrell gave it, or MacArthur gave it everything he could down at third, but couldn't flag it down. One nothing Longhorns. I think they might have had a pickoff play on right there with Wheelis because it looked like MacArthur's first move was back to third base. Robbie Hudson, the second baseman. Oh. Takes one for a ball. Now there was a long conversation with the shortstop and the pitcher, and a lot of times the shortstop will put a play on with the catcher. And we'll get back to that in a second so you can see what we're talking about. That one misses low and away. But watch the third to base of MacArthur, okay? Now his first movement is going to be to his right. As soon as this play is going, he starts to go a little bit to the right and it looks almost like it's going to be a pickoff move. And then he ends up diving. Hit towards short. Torty will take the play at first and got him. But Texas grabs the lead as they so often do. End of two, Longhorns on top. Augie Garrido will join us after this. What are we racing for anyway? Let's race for a Coke. Yeah. Drivers ready. Go! Got some horsepower, Bobby. Come on, DJ Galloway. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. No problem. <laughs> hey, Kevin, we need you in the pit. Sorry about your little car, Tony. Florida Gators one to nothing. I'm here right now with Texas head coach Augie Garrido. Coach, yesterday you told me you thought your team was a little shaky, a little jittery. Yeah. What do you think of how they are today? I think they're fine. I, I, they've been they've been real good, uh, real responsive. We've been talking upstairs. David Morrell has been just clutch here in the College World Series. You told me that's where he shines. Why is that? I have no idea. I wish I could put him in the College World Series for the whole season. <laughs> Augie, thanks. Thank you. Guys. All right, here you go. Thank you, Aaron, and he certainly has been clutch. He just gobbled up everything down at third. And now the Gators in that familiar position of having to come from behind out here. That's going to be difficult against McCulloch, too, because he's got a nice rhythm going. Fastballs, change-ups, a little wider zone. He's, he's got a huge advantage today. He has fanned four through the first two innings. There's not a lot of hit. That one's fouled out of play by Justin Torty. Young man is only hitting 238 as a junior and leads it off here in the third. Look out. Oh, 
That one rocketed into the Florida dugout. Are they taking batting practice on Kyle Peterson again? I'm telling you. Obviously, Torty not getting around on a fastball, and McCullough threw him another one. Well, again, 0 2 is one of the most difficult counts to hit, and that's why I don't understand why guys waste pitches 0 2. You know, go after him. If you can get him to chase a pitch, then you got a huge advantage. When a, as a hitter, when you get, go to a 1 2 count, you feel like, okay, I got a chance still. 0 2, you're still you're very defensive. And the higher that fastball is, the faster it usually is, and even faster than it seems. Strike on the inside corner to Barton. One and one to Steven, who is the DH against right handed pitchers. And the only guy in this lineup hitting 300 in the College World Series. And LeClaire had some trouble with that, had to leap at the end to make the grab. Well, we've seen people do all kinds of crazy antics out there with his aggressive play. But look at the footwork, just tremendous footwork to get back and make this catch. He plays an easy right field. Yeah, he got caught backing instead of turning. Yeah. He's got the sunglasses on, though. That's a tough sun field. Back to the top of the order in Corsoletti. And that one caught the home plate umpire. Skip the loo, my darling. <laughs> now everyone will delay a little bit to give him a uh, chance to shake it off. Ouch, that hit right at the ankle in the area where you got no protection. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that hurt. That hurt. And he, it's going to hurt for a while. He deserves an ovation because I tell you what, I might have had to shut her down right there. Oh. Somebody else put the gear on. I'm done. You know, Kyle would have been done. <laughs> Kyle got hit harder now. <laughs> <laughs> or at least as hard. Oh. That hurts. Foul tip. One and one to Corsoletti. There are many places you catch a foul tip where it's not padded that it doesn't hurt. Right. Hit on the ground of the second baseman Hudson throws him out. Another quick inning for Kyle McCulloch. One, two, three here in the third. Pat McMahon, the Gators head coach, will join us from the College World Series when we come back. Warren still holding on to a 1-0 lead over the Florida Gators here in Omaha, Nebraska. Florida head coach Pat McMahon joining me now. And coach, your team still looking for their first hit versus Kyle. Kyle, what are you telling your hitters? Well, we've got to continue to work counts and battle. And uh, one guy wants to break through for us, So we use the term, who wants to step up? That's a key for us. He's throwing the ball very well. But we just got to continue with some quality at bats and put the ball in play. Obviously, you're facing elimination today. What becomes the focus as time goes on? Well, you know, that, that's a great point. Our guys are really excited. What we want to try to do is play in the moment pitch by pitch. I mean, that that's so important for us. we got to do a better job getting to advantage counts, we will, to make them play defense and the same thing for us. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Mike. Aaron, thanks very much. And they have yet to scratch out a hit against McCullough, who has gone three innings, struck out five, and walked only one. I thought that was a great question Aaron asked. Is, you know, basically, as the game continues on elimination, what do you do? Because Really, there is no tomorrow. So you start bringing in everybody, you start pinch hitting, you bring your pitchers in, you do what you need to do to survive. Peoples, who singled to start the ball game, will lead it off here in the third against Brian Ball, who has allowed four hits and a run through his first two innings of work. Ball trying to keep the Gators alive here in Omaha. Well, he's pitched around danger, too. He got the double play ball in the first inning, and that was huge. He's, he's done what he needs to do to keep his team there. This one is fouled out of play down the right field side. They need some offense. Yes, they do. That's what's hurting Florida right now. 
I mean, we have reached the point. They've got to be thinking to themselves. We gave up one run. One run may be enough to beat us because we're just not hitting anything. Yeah. Toward the shortstop. Tordy. Picked up a tough hop right yes, there. Yes, he did. With that play. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tonight with round two of the Subway Series. As the Mets face the Yankees, it's also available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN HD. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Bank of America on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. Hey. Drew Stubbs, who sacrificed in his first at bat in the first oh. inning, and takes one off the shoulder. Well, it looked like a breaking ball just got away. If you, if you, you're going to get hit by a pitch. You're better off getting hit by a breaking pitch, but this ball just doesn't get out of his hands. You see the spin just didn't come back. He loses this ball right out of his hand. And this may have gotten him right on the edge of the helmet. But fortunately for Stubbs, it's a glancing blow. Mm -hmm. And if he runs, watch this guy go. He is their leader in stolen bases, 32 out of 38. Geraldman behind the plate, a quick release and a big arm. And Seth Johnston, a good hitter at the plate. Singled his first time up. Well, they do a great job of keeping the runner close, and you know, you will call it a Bach move or an advantage or whatever it is that you pitchers call it out there Kyle. <laughs> you base dealers call it a balk move. Here's this move. Here's what a base runner seeing. And you start to look at that knee. So you want to lift the foot and kind of tilt the knee to give him a little bit of a freeze. You got to move to throw over that way. He's doing a nice job. That's that's you want to always borderline as close as you can to it. Oh. Ball and no strikes to Johnston. Seventh round draft choice of the Orioles a year ago came back to school. And this year a fourth round draft choice by the Padres. And you play a different ball game when you're Texas with Stubbs and, and Johnston in, in this part of the order. You know, obviously they got one out. You're not going to sacrifice the guy over. But even with no outs, they're tempted enough to let him try to run in this situation and let Johnston swing the bat. And Johnston drills it to right. LeClaire comes on with a great catch. Two outs. And that is tremendous base running, too. That ball is a rocket. That's a nice baseball play all the way around. You get a fastball outside, you rub it to right. The right fielder makes a great catch, and the base runner reads it. I mean, this is a nice baseball play when everybody did what they're supposed to do. Stubbs got back, and now Crouch, who grounded into a double play to kill a rally in his first inning. About the only thing he's done with a bat in his hand out here all week that's been wrong. Well, he's been on fire. He's got some tremendous power. And he showed us that yesterday, but the other thing he does, he's, he can shoot the ball through those holes. And the definition of a true power hit is when you got a runner at first base, you hit a gap or you can score him. He's got that ability. This one's hit to right. LeClaire back and toward the line will make the grab. And another threat dies for Texas, but at the end of three, the Longhorns trying to close it out have a one nothing lead. We're in Omaha. We'll go to the fourth inning in the College World Series. Texas on top of Florida, one to nothing. The umpire is very kind to wear microphones for us. Let's hear the exchange this last half inning. Yeah, woke me up. Hey, uh, did you ask those grounds people? This kid kicked all the all the dirt out in front of the rubber. Kyle said there's a hole in front of that rubber that deep, and he can't get his foot out. On our uh, this one? Yeah, he oh, said he's tearing some plan. Tom Holliday, Texas's fine pitching coach, asked the grounds crew, Jesse Cuevas and his guys to come out. 
and take care of it. And this is as well a manicured uh, minor league ballpark as you'll ever see. Well, it really is. They do a tremendous job. And, and Kyle, when you ask that request as a pitcher, are you kind of worried about offending anybody or just say, I got to get done when I need to get done? No, you do. Because, you, I mean, you know, a lot of times you come out of a bullpen and the, and the, the game ought to be totally different. And the biggest thing is, is two holes. One, where you take off from, and second, where you land. And if that hole where you take off from is too deep, it feels like your foot can't get out of there. It feels like you're sticking a little bit. Sounded like that was his problem, but by the numbers, I don't think he's been sticking too much. He shouldn't have changed anything. <laughs> so left it alone. Certainly would be the only thing that's bothering him so far through three innings. He struck out five, not a lot of hit. And Adam Davis trying to get something started for the Gators. Who have had virtually silent bats except for a the occasional power explosion, which has kept them in this thing. Okay. Two and one to Adam Davis. It's the two, three, four men in the order here in the Florida fourth. It's a great changeup. Sure was. You know, what I'm seeing from the Texas pitching staff is generally when you play at this level, you're going to see one pitcher on a team that's going to be very difficult to hit. But they've got about three or four guys, including the bullpen, that, that give you a tough time at the plate. Oh. McCullough just misses there. It's three and two. Here in Omaha, McCullough has thrown 10 innings, he's not given up a run, six hits, 12 strikeouts. Those are championship numbers. Sky to left and Carson Kiner barely had to move. Makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Glad to have you with us from the College World Series in Omaha. This is game two of the best two out of three championship series. If Texas wins today it is over and the Longhorns will have won a sixth national championship. If Florida wins it will force a deciding game three tomorrow night here at Rosenblatt Stadium. And this series all the way through by all eight teams has featured superb pitching solid defense and great games. They couldn't have been more exciting this year. Well you're going to get a good look at how you pitch around a hitter who can hurt you and Laporta is going to be a guy he's going to throw change ups to breaking balls off the plate not going to get much to hit at all there's a breaking ball off the plate and basically if we walk you we walk you and that's what happened last time but other than that you're not going to beat us with a, with us making a mistake and giving you a pitch in your zone to hit. That's what Texas is thinking. Step off, step, talk, 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 talk. A ball and two strikes to Matt Laporta 26 home runs number one in the nation two of them out of here in the series with six driven in struck him out that is number six for Kyle McCulloch yeah, that changeup is devastating and the changeup to me is is one of the most tough difficult pitches to hit in baseball because it looks like a fastball coming out of your arm. And as you release the ball you read fastball you're thinking fastball and then before you know it it never gets there on you. And that's why you see guys take one arm swings out in front. Geraldman stands in with nobody on and two out in the Gator fourth. And McCulloch who had struck out 91 in 132 innings coming into this game has already fanned six in this one. In three and two thirds. Guide to left. Kiner comes in about five steps and makes the catch. Another one, two, three inning for Kyle McCulloch. And Texas continues to dominate on the hill. Thursday night against Baylor, the Texas Longhorns who lead here one to nothing. Got heroics from Chance Wheelis late in the game to win. Earlier in the ball game, his shoulder dislocated again, hurting him so bad he couldn't even run out of ground ball. But he talked his way into a final appearance in the ninth. 
and hit a walk-off solo home run that allowed Texas to beat Baylor 4-3 and put them into the championship series. Chance Wheelis showing a lot of courage and a lot of skill during this College World Series and will stand in to lead off the fourth. He already has a base hit in this game and is 5 for 17 in Omaha. Well, I, when I look at Chance Willis, I see a young man that doesn't even understand the, the potential he has. I, mean, I think he's going to be, if he ever has that one thing register that I can be great, I think he's going to be a great one. He's got tremendous size, very good range, catches the ball. He's left-handed, left-hand hitter, hits lefties nice. I think he's going to have a lot more power. And has a great name. Oh, yeah. I absolutely. mean, how do you beat Chance Wheelis? <laughs> it works. Well, I thought it was interesting talking with Augie the next day after the home run. He said, that's one of those moments that will change him forever. As an individual. Yes. Not, not a baseball player. It may do that. But as an individual, and Augie is, I think as you get older and understand that uh, lessons learned not only in the classroom, but on an athletic field, teach players give them situations where you find out how they react and, and what you do as a human being not just a ball player and that is more important than winning although that's not the way fans look at it and you can understand that as well and we listen one hopper to second base is thrown out well that's one of the reasons I love baseball so much is that if you're a great player at a major league level you failed Seven out of ten times you've hit 300. Right. Even, you know, at any level, I should say 300 is oh the standard. And you got to learn how to deal with those seven times you've failed. And it's almost like a metaphor with life. You have to be able to overcome those failures to continue to succeed in life. Plus, at any level, you play so many games that you're not always going to be successful. You're going to have your share of uh, heartbreak on the field. And you, as you said, you have to learn to deal with that. Teagarden pulls one foul against Brian Ball, who looks like he is settling down after a little trouble early. Four hits and a run in the first two innings, and now they will wrap that shoulder for Chance Wheelis, or unwrap it so that he will uh, be able to go back out in the field. Gives him more of an extension as a first baseman, being able to reach that arm up for throws, although I'm sure that's extremely painful. Yeah, that's got to hurt regardless. But, but back to you talking about ball. The double play in the first inning really helped him out tremendously. It allowed him to come back the next inning and start to settle in. And both our pitchers are settling down pretty good right now. This one is chop foul behind the plate. A ball and two strikes to Taylor Teagarden, who sacrificed his first time up. And Taylor, Gators, Gators haven't been able to use those teeth. No, yet. they haven't. They haven't got a bite out of anything right no. now. Longhorns won't get close enough to the pond to give them a shot. <laughs> Back up the middle. Seeing eye, ground ball for a base hit for Taylor Teagarden. And that's the advantage of the aluminum bat. You wonder what's the difference, biggest difference with pro baseball and college? That right there. That's that's an uh, uh, pick up another piece of lumber on that one. Here's a look at it from hat cams that squeaks on through. It's a tough read for infielders because it's not a natural thing coming off the bat. Your first movement is to break, and then it picks up speed sometimes with the aluminum bat when that's not what your eyes are reading based on the swing that you just right. saw. Carson Kiner 0 for 1 the hitter with Tea Garden down at first. Not much of a threat to go anywhere. Fouled out of play down the right field side into the seats. Kiner's father Ron and his uncle Dennis played at Sam Houston State College Baseball. Another Uncle Don played for the Horns. That was back in the mid-70s. It's 
seeing so many so many second generation players and very soon third generation players I imagine. All right. Big swing didn't get it. Oh and two. Well with the emergence of, of women's softball and, and women's athletics has just exploded the whole sports scene in itself. You get so many different kids involved in That's athletics right. and now you're going to you breed a whole lot more. Missed outside. You know we're talking about legends. Uh, uh, Augie Garrido certainly a legend who is still active in the game. Uh, a legend uh, for Texas. Daryl Royal was here yesterday. Yes. Uh, the legendary football coach who still looks terrific. And I can just remember watching games as a kid on Thanksgiving Day when Daryl Royal was the the coach and when they played Oklahoma or Texas A&M and Daryl Royal was as good as it got boy. It's one of those legendary names. I even knew that name out in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> And that was back in the day when you didn't see you know all the games all the time. I mean there wasn't an ESPN around to, to show you games on ESPN Classic or ESPN 2 and, and no computer access and all that stuff. Sometimes it was tough to see games. You always saw Texas. When you were good you got on TV. That's right. Kiner facing a 2 2 count from Brian Ball. One on and one out here in the Texas fourth. And Ball gets a big strikeout. Nice piece of pitching. He got him a couple breaking balls. He fouled off and then he got him with a fastball on the outside half. And it actually looked like it had a little bit of a cut to it. So Ball, who was seven and five on the year with a 3.46 ERA, starting to find his rhythm. Now he faces Marol with two out and a runner on. He's still down one nothing to Texas here in the fourth. That one caught the corner one and one to Marol who singled his first time up and is six for 13 in the College World Series this year. He's been so much better in postseason than his regular season numbers, which were rather dreadful for someone as talented as he is. This ball's hit hard to left. Dickey came in, goes back and lost the ball. Here comes T Garden. There won't be a play at the plate, and it's 2 0. Well, that ball just ate him up. He misplayed a ball earlier in the series going towards the line. And this is a tough ball just lined right at him. Let's take a good look at his read. He goes over and then he realizes this ball is going to take off. And the only thing you can do now at that point is try to jump and, and catch it and knock it down. But Texas again has forced the pressure and forces mistakes. This is a ball he knows he, he should have caught. And I, I think if you asked him he'd tell you that. Absolutely. And it costs them. A run. It's an error all the way. No RBI from Marol, but the run scores in the presence of Teagarden. And now Hudson. And Florida can hardly afford any miscues. Well, you often runs have been just so dear for them, Harold. Yeah, it's going to be. It's tough. They've texted him and pitching. You often wonder though, how does an outfielder miss that ball? A lot of times it's knuckleball and coming at you. And you see that happen quite often on line drives like that. He just missed it. Dickey's third error in the College World Series this year. 
right now I think he's much more of an athlete than he is a, a polished baseball player. He's a two sports star backup quarterback on the football team. I think you're right with that. He, he only gets he hadn't played really solid baseball in a year and a half. No. And the ball will find you. Struck him out to end the inning but Texas adds a run they're up to nothing. We'll go to the top of the fifth at the College World Series Florida over or Florida trailing Texas two to nothing. This is Gavin Dickey in the last inning in left field a ball he should have had and a ball that costs his club another run and Dickey very upset with himself as he comes into the dugout. His third error in the College World Series. Let's take a look at our Diet Coke game track. And Matt Laporta the only guy for the Gators to reach base today that was on a walk Brian Ball has already thrown 50 pitches but settling in very well Chance Wheelis drove in a run for Texas back in the second and Kyle McCullough four innings he's fanned six and walked one is not allowed to hit as yet. And he will face the five six seven men. For the Florida Gators. And again if they get to the seventh you are going to see a kid by the name of Jay Brent Cox who leads the nation in saves although right now McCulk looks like he could stand out there forever. Well he's he's had a pretty good breeze going he's throwing a fastball in this change up and occasional curveball to get guys out. Good look at Jay Brent right there. Right on two three we got up kid. MacArthur struck out his first time up. Two for 18 here in Omaha. It's been a struggle for him with the bat in his hand. Well, every time I look at Brendan MacArthur, you, you, you just have to admire his courage. The young man was sucker punts, had three brain operations. Playing and this one to very deep short the long throw, not in time. And probably even the Gators or the, the Texas Longhorn fans silently rooting for MacArthur to succeed. It's an infield single to keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series information. Just log on to NCAAsports.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. First base hit of the game to deep short by Brandon MacArthur, and it brings up the power hitting Brian LeClaire. And LeClaire's dangerous. He had a big hit, big home run the other day that kind of ignited this ball club. He's driven in 15 runs in 10 NCAA ball games this year. So he is hot coming in, but only three for 16, now three for 17 in Omaha as he grounded out his first time up. Saw a steady diet of breaking balls yesterday. First pitch today, he saw it was a fastball. He swung and grounded out. So. He's got to be a little frustrated every time going to the plate, finding yourself 0 and 2. Well, he's 0 and 2 right now. Well, Mike, the interesting thing again about the aluminum bat, what it allows the infielders to do, and what it has to do. See how deep they're playing at double play depth. They're probably three or four steps deeper than you would with a wooden bat because of the reaction time. Outside two and two. So that's another reason you don't see a whole lot of double plays turned at the, at the college level. It, your, your infielders are already playing three feet, four feet deeper than you would in, in a professional game with wooden bats. Step off, step off, step off, step off. The umpire grants time and that is something that uh, you can't call time you have to request it and they have been very generous in that call out here. Balls hit to straightaway center Stubbs drifts to his right will make the catch. Out number one here in the Florida fifth. And that was a change up he got him on so he's seen off speed pitches and this ball club looks like a very good fastball hitting team but they have been frustrated 
with the off-speed pitches. And you, you, the, the difference is you don't see that many guys that can throw this many off-speed pitches for strikes. Not exactly. as a staff. They're doing it. Now, Dickey would like to do something to make up for that error in the last inning. He struck out his first time up as well. One of six for McCulloch so far. Gavin Dickey's a rarity in, in baseball itself where he's a two sport athlete. We don't see that very often anymore because each sport demands so much time of their players now. Sure. Oh. But sometimes it's an opportunity to get a kid who otherwise would not be coming to your institution. I mean, he's from Tallahassee, the home of the Florida State Seminoles. Yep. He's and there are, there's not a whole lot of big exchanges between Gainesville and Tallahassee. Mm. Hitting the air to Peoples and right. That's two outs. And just nothing hard hit for the Gators. McCulloch has been superb, as has the rest of the Texas pitching staff throughout this entire College World Series. We started this game with a 1.25 staff ERA. Amazing. It's ludicrous. It, it really is. Uh, you look at all the different ways you can get base hits. And particularly with the aluminum bat, we saw one earlier that would be jammed or a ground out, and all of a sudden the ball's into the outfield. Yes. Trying to bunt for a base hit is Justin Torty and fouls it off. The Gators looking for any way to get a rally going. And they had their only base hit to start this inning with MacArthur on a ground ball to deep short that he beat out. Checking throw over. I wouldn't even be opposed to MacArthur trying to steal the situation. If he gets thrown out, you still got Torty to start the next half inning. You got to do something to try to ignite the offense to get him going. If he makes it, you may get a dribbler that gets through the infield and all of a sudden you pick up a run. But it's tough to play base to base and try to get back in it when sure you got is. a pitcher just up there just plowing you down. And McCulloch already has Torty in an 0 2 hole. McCulloch, if you're thinking ahead, has already had two complete games and a shutout to his credit this year. That one's foul tipped. He's in such a, a tremendous rhythm. You look at their their staff ERA one mm. one one. But I, I tell you, Mike, they they get ahead of hitters, and they're not having to throw over. They're getting a nice rhythm almost every time. Whenever they get base runners on, you don't think numbers like that thrill a pitching coach like Tom Holliday? Wow. One point one one. And if you're not familiar with earned run averages, if you're just a casual fan and tuning in for the College World Series. That means these pitchers give up an average here in Omaha every nine innings 1.11 runs that wins virtually all the time and another strikeout the seventh for Kyle McCulloch he has been dominant in this game and has a two nothing lead. Fan interference, and the catcher over there attempting to make the play. I believe the catcher could have made the catch. Got him! He's out! Well, 
Well, some of us care more than others about the technology of the College <laughs> World Series. A nice, uh, nice nap on a hot summer afternoon. But we want to thank all of our hardworking crew, uh, not just the audio people who you heard on that uh, series of bites from the series, but uh, everybody who has worked so hard out here, the men and women who dedicate themselves to working long, hard days and hours to bring you just some superb television from Omaha, Nebraska, and our hats are off to them. Chopped on the ground at the second baseman, Adam Davis. Well, my and son. Nick Peoples is out to start the inning. So often we get credit for a great broadcast because they hear our voices more than anything else. But I tell you what, the people behind the scenes are what make it happen. It's they're good. It's an honor to do this. It's a lot of fun and covering all the different camera angles and you can ask for different things to see and you get it and it's just tremendous. It makes the broadcast so easy. I think we need a dress code though. Yeah. <laughs> How about suits and ties for the camera guy? Oh, man. I don't think that would go over too well. That's tough enough to get us to wear those. Yeah, absolutely. Drew Stubbs stands in against Brian Ball, who would love to see some run support from his Gator teammates, but hasn't gotten any so far. He has given up two runs, settled down after those first two innings. And has been really tough ever since. Stubbs hit that one really hard outside of third, but foul. You know, I would think as a pitcher, when you got the designated hitter hitting for you, that's got to be so frustrating to sit there and watch your offense continually not get anything for you. And you can't sure. really say anything like, come on, let's go hit this guy. What are you doing? You know, you can't do that. Then you got a bad attitude. But that's got to be tough. Absolutely. Especially when you're out there playing your heart out. Of course, there's been no lack of effort from these Gators either. We saw Micah Owings and Lasevic from Tulane. At least they got to hit in their games as, as starting pitchers. And that's got to be tough to watch somebody try to score runs for you. Lost him on a base on balls. Aaron Andrews in the stands, and she has uh, the parents of Seth Johnson, who's been one of the real stars of this series, Aaron. Certainly has, obviously. Dad really fired up. We'll talk to Mom first. Seth, a big decision coming back to Texas this season because he felt like he wanted to win it again. What was your thoughts when he made that decision? We were thrilled for him because you can only be a senior at University of Texas one time. We we're excited. It was education. He was going to get closer to his degree, and um, it was a longer ride for us. Dad, you've been here four straight years. How does this year compare to the others? It's very special. It's coming to an end. And uh, hold on a minute. <laughs> hold on one second. <laughs> you got to watch the pitch. And that That's an will be a double play ball. The throw on to first held by Matt Laporta. So Seth Johnston hit the ball on the button, but right at the second baseman to disappoint mom and dad at least this time. Florida Gators running out of time here in the College World Series down to nothing. We here at ESPN HD and ESPN 2 HD want to be part of your 4th of July. So we're bringing you five on the 4th, five Major League Baseball games on ESPN HD and ESPN 2 HD, both in high definition. Don't be left out. Sharing our 4th of July celebration by experiencing five on the 4th. All right, one of the reasons that they've been so, he's so tough, Kyle McCulloch, is the fastball changeup. Here's what a ball looks like coming out of his hands. That's the changeup as that ball dies. And here's a good look at a fastball. It's coming out of the same arm slot. And again, you see the sink. That was the changeup. I can't even tell looking at them both. The first one was a fastball, the second one was the changeup. McCulloch has allowed only one base hit. That of the infield variety. No runs. He struck out seven and walked only one. And he faces Stephen Barton, the number nine man, the junior designated hitter to begin the sixth inning. The top of the order will follow him. And for one of the few times today, McCulloch is quickly behind. 
He started off the first batter this way and was still able to come back. First batter of the game, that is, and still was able to come back to him. And Horton taking all the way, three and one. Wouldn't be surprised if he takes another one. Well, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the ball game. He should have just been patient, but he didn't. Steady lines at the center field for the second base hit for the Gators all day. Kyle, sometimes after a long layoff, is that, uh, is that difficult to come back? Yeah, I know it is. I mean, especially when it's hot like this, you're sitting in the dugout, come back out there, you start. It doesn't take longer to get ready, but a lot of times it just takes longer to get back in your rhythm. You guys were talking about McCulloch's changeup. And, you know, to me, there's a couple things that make it so good. The first thing's a grip. And if you, usually the good changeups are going to come from a good grip because you need that arm action and body action to look the same. You talked about his arm angle, but his arm action looks the same, too. When you're standing up there at the plate, he doesn't tip that changeup at all, and he throws it to right-handers and left-handers. So at the plate, you can't eliminate any pitches with him. Corsaletti stands in looking for a hit that would get the Gators going. He is 0 for 2 today, 5 for 21 in Omaha. Well, everybody's put a lot of pressure on Corsaletti today to be the guy who's got to come through, but the, the main thing is their whole offense has got to hit. It's difficult to lean on the leadoff guy because he's the guy who has to take a lot of pitches, and he's more than likely going to find himself in the hole. Little action in the Texas pen. Randy Boone, the right hander. Anything they do out of there with a lead is to set up Jay Brent Cox. And Corsaletti was the guy that they named before the series as somebody who had to succeed for them to be successful. But Stephen Barton continues, to, who had the single, continues to be the only guy hitting over 300. So it's been a total power failure. Yeah, the whole club has struggled. Now, this may be your last crack, too, as you head to the top of the order. Runner goes, and the ball stabbed by Wheelers down at first. Bad shoulder and all, and he throws on to McCullough. Nice play by Wheelers. That's a game-changing play right there. You're looking at first and third. The Gators get the runner moving. I like that they tried something. They got a hit and run. And he does everything he's supposed to do. A tremendous play. Now, if he wasn't so doggone big, he's 6'7". Look how far he went out on that dive to go get that ball. That's a tremendous play, and that's what we were discussing earlier. He hasn't even started to understand how, how great of an impact he can have as a player. Wheelis with a terrific play. Boy, that's first and third, no outs, and that changes the whole game. Right there. When you know that hurt that shoulder too. Had to extend all the way with the right arm, which is his bad shoulder. And he got up very, very slowly after making that play. So a runner at second, one out for Adam Davis. Davis. A pretty deep right center, but will stay in the park, and they almost collide. Stubbs makes the catch in front of Nick Peoples. The runner advances the third, but there's two outs. Well, the reason they had such a tough time is this wind is just gusting the left field. Now it's going to grab this ball and just push it all the way from right field to left to left to right center. This ball started at Peoples, and you see him drifting. And Stubbs looked at it about three or four times and said, well, maybe I better take over on this ball because it drifted a good 15 feet towards center. Sure did. Tom Holliday wants to come out and talk to McCulloch, who has a runner at third. And McCulloch now up to 87 on the pitch count. It's the only trouble he has been in all day long. A runner a third with two out. And, and the other thing they're discussing is you've got Matt Laporta coming to the plate. And we've already talked to earlier about he's the guy they've designated in their order, regardless of what anybody else says about Corsaletti or whoever being the key guy. Laporta's a guy you don't want to beat you. He can hit a two-run home run to tie this game. And I think they're thinking, how do you want to pitch him? That's what that conversation was about. And Laporta, the only one with an hailing distance of 300 among those top four hitters. They've given him a steady diet of balls on the outside half, make him have to beat to the right field, particularly with this wind blowing, and it's been off-speed pitches. So if he's going to take one out of here, it's going to be opposite way with some 
breaking ball or something. There's one away. And when they're pitching you that carefully and acknowledging that you're not going to be the guy that hurts them, then somebody else in that club has to come through. Yeah, they're forcing the hand of someone else to have to step up. This is an unintentional, intentional walk. Goes after one there, and that'll get back in the stands. Foul. Laporta, 26 home runs. That is not only the SEC number one, that is the national number one, and has 79 RBIs, one short of the school record. That outside pitch hit the deep left. Kiner, a step from the track. And that's what you do on an outside pitch. You make him have to jerk it, and it eliminates the power. Off the end of the bat, he gave it a ride, but not far enough. The Gators come up empty again. Welcome back to Omaha. Brilliantly pitched ball game, and Texas leads Florida 2 0. Let's check in with Harold in the Home Depot coaching clinic. Well, what we're talking about right there, when you're pitching a guy outside and you're forcing him to have to pull a ball, here's what happens. If you want a ball inside, you got all your power right here. Now you're on top of that pitch. But if it goes away, next thing you know, you got to reach. And now he has nothing left. And fortunately, the wind was blowing. That's what took it even further. But take a look at his swing. Now his power has absolutely gone away from him. You see him end up having to reach for that ball. Had he been able to shoot that to right field, he may have had a better chance. But anytime you get out here and you start trying to reach, it eliminates your power. And that's what Texas did by trying to pitch him outside. They neutralized his power. Great job of pitching. And a great uh, demonstration by you, HR, because I, th I think you're absolutely right about Laporta going to uh, right field. He has such tremendous power in that body, you'd think he would be able to hit it out to any field. Yeah, but it, it, you're absolutely right, Mike. But anytime you, you get off balance, it neutralizes the power. Brian Ball is back out there for his sixth inning of work, just trying to hold him close. And Crouch turned on one and just crushed it well, perfect, into the stands. Perfect example of what we were just talking about. That ball's inside. And he's got all his power on the inside half. And I mean, he crushed it. Yikes. Crouch has flied out to right and grounded into a double play today. Watch this. Now watch Crouch on the inside half. This is the difference. Everything's behind that ball. Another shot foul. I think both our pitchers are getting a little bit tired in this heat. You know, you can talk pitch count all you want, but the heat wears you down more than the, the pitches. Falkenbach, who we saw yesterday, the submarining closer, getting warm down there in the Gator bullpen. Shouldn't take long on a day like this. Mm. I think Mike you said it best too uh, earlier this week we were talking about making pitching changes and you said hitters will tell you when a pitcher needs to come out of the game with the swings they take. Sure. And I mean a series of line drive outs to me is the the best indication in the world a guy's lost it. Yep. One, two. That's what drives you nuts watching major league games when you see somebody <laughs> serving up nothing but BBs and they stay in the ball game and you know they're going to get touched up sooner or later and Crouch called out on strikes. I'm really impressed with Ball after the first two innings. He has settled in and been very, very tough. Uh, you can't expect a guy to put zeros up there every time he goes out. He's he's done a fantastic job to keep his team in it. And one of the runs that he gave up was unearned on the air and left. This young man doing everything he can to give the Gators a chance to stay alive. 
Now Wheelis who made that tremendous play down at first. Well, Mike, to me, this is the key play of the game. Watch the range. You got a hit and run, the runner going through. This is a first and third situation. And with no outs, uh, he took three or four steps. He's six, seven. That ball's in the hole. And that's in the outfield. Now you're first and third with no outs for Florida, and you're heading to the heart of the lineup. Exactly. Huge play by Wheelis, who has already been a hero with the bat. <laughs> Wheelis one for two this afternoon. It's that one to deep left. Dickey goes back at the wall. Wheelis wearing the hero's mantle in Omaha, his second home run in the College World Series. I'm telling you, we're seeing a star born, man. This is a ball outside that he drives the opposite field. Now watch his approach. This ball's on the outside half, and he just takes it that way. It does it nice and easy, but he's able to wait long enough to let that ball get back on him and generate us some power. That was a no-doubter as soon as he hit it. Wheelis gets a curtain call. 3-0 Texas, and they inch even closer to a closeout victory that would eliminate Florida here in Omaha. And now they want to come out and talk to Brian Ball. Well, you don't see Pat McMahon go to the mound very often. He's just telling this young man, hey, you, you've thrown a tremendous game for us. You kept us right where we needed to be. Yes, he did. Now, Wheelis, after the home run, they will take the tape off and get him ready to go play in the field, and we'll have a pitching change when we come back. Another perfect weather day in Omaha, Nebraska, and Texas nearly perfect offensively, defensively, and on the mound. They have a 3 nothing lead. And Florida will go to the bullpen for Connor Falkenbach, the sidewinding senior who is making his 51st appearance of the year. Ball went five and a third, gave up six hits, three runs, two of them earned. Well, Falkenbach was lights out yesterday and, you know, talked about in the broadcast yesterday that he could throw every day. Well, he may have to. <laughs> He win, they would win this game today. He's probably going to be back in there tomorrow. Taylor Teagarden stands in as Texas has increased its lead to three. That ball hit to deep center field. Corsoletti going, going, made the catch, then dropped it. Would have been a heck of a grab if he could have held on. It looked like he had it right on the edge of his glove and hit the wall. Got a long way to get close to that ball. Tea Garden hits this. Now remember, this wind is pushing the ball to left center field. That's why it ends up twisting on him a little bit. He almost got there and was almost able to make the catch. This ball just barely out of the grip, grass of it. It's a rude greeting for Falkenbach. Be interesting here if they bunt him over to third base. Of course, they got an out, so I don't think they'll be bunting. Pitching change threw me for a second there. Carson Kiner swings away. I, I got my stat guys laughing at me up here. So that's okay. That's cool. I got you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Dave and Mark, I got them. This Texas club is loaded, man. You know, I was just going to say the same thing. You think back over the course of this College World Series, there is nothing they haven't done well. Absolutely nothing. They have absolutely dominated every opponent 
in every game and every facet of the game. And when they got here, people were not talking about Texas. They finished third in the Big 12. They were talking about how Baylor had dominated them all year. Tulane was the number one team in the nation. All the upsets in the regionals and super regionals, but Texas was not on everybody's lips. Mm -hmm. When you do the fundamental things properly in Texas, always does under Augie Garrido you've got a chance to win ball games anytime against anybody and, and they're a fun program to watch because I'm sure in February and March people were thinking Texas is not that good and with fundamental teams it takes a while but once they get in their stride they're very oh. difficult to beat because they're boring you know they're not going to be a, a real pizzazz type of team fundamentals are boring but they mm -hmm. win and that's what Texas does. And now all of a sudden the power has come to join on to the running and the catching the ground balls and the good pitch. Three and two to Kiner. You know, I'll disagree with you. I don't think fundamentals are boring. Okay. I think I think fundamentals are fun to watch. I think that's to me, that's the essence of baseball. You know, the, the first time I ever heard somebody say that one nothing game, how can you watch it? That was a boring baseball game. No, it wasn't because everybody made every routine play. The pitchers made the pitches they were supposed to. Yep. The run scored on a walk, a sacrifice bunt, and a ground ball single up the middle. And I no, thought it was, I, you know, I thought, hey, that's a sensational ball game. No, I love it. I I, I agree. But I mean, for the, the, the just for the, person, the average the fan average who fan wants to see four home game, runs. It's it's not going to be any glamorous thing. You're not going to make touch them all. You're not making all these other things that we've built baseball out to be. Baseball is a fundamental game that takes time. And if you're, you you put your time in, you do the fundamentals right, you're going to walk away winning. Kiner draws a base on balls from Falkenbach. That'll get Marole up with one out and two on. Well, we used to have some games that weren't boring out here. 21-17, you'd have nine home runs. That just bored me to tears. Yeah, I mean, you watch one guy after another come up and hit 400-foot fly balls to left field. Yes, indeed. Your point has been well taken, Mr. Patrick. Marol has reached on an error and singled. Checks his swing. Uh, every year I, I, I watch guys that have been drafted. I look at the draft list and I wonder what were they thinking? And this is one of these guys that I look at 23rd round draft pick and I'm thinking what were they thinking about David Morrall? This guy can play. Hits this deep to left center. Great stroke, tremendous power. Some guys just rise to the occasion. And that's what this young man is doing here at the College World Series. You play to the level of your competition, and he does it. Five rows back. And it's six nothing Longhorns. Falkenbach, the outstanding relief pitcher, well, we has touched, been shelled. Yeah, he has. And we touched on it last night, that when you face a guy like this, you have to see him a few times. And one of the reasons that guys that drop down are usually in a closer role, you only see a closer very few times. He's not a starter where you're going to see two or three times in a ball game. Now back to back days he's gone through that Texas lineup a couple times yesterday. Now there's no deception anymore to the drop down. Now you're knowing where to pick the ball up and they've had a pretty good offensive day with the attack today at him. Four runs home in the inning two home runs. And a six nothing lead Robbie Hudson stands in with the bases empty and one out. 
Inning started quietly enough with Kraut striking out. Trying to punt his way on and fouled it out. Fouled it off. A roll now in the championship series. Five for eight, two home runs, six driven in. For the casual fan that doesn't watch college baseball, you're sitting at home going, what in the world was he bunting for right there? The way they're putting it on him. That's how college baseball is played. You continue to put pressure on the other team. It's a legitimate play at this level. You may not see that in a major league game where a guy just three run home runs hit and you're putting it on him and your pitcher's shutting him down. The guy goes up there and bunts. That may not happen, but this is not major league baseball. Through the hole in the left field for another base hit. Hudson with his first knock of the afternoon, his third in Omaha. And Falkenbach not used to being treated this way. And Pat McMahon going to hustle out. To talk to his relief pitcher, Falkenbach comes on, hasn't hasn't retired anybody, and Falkenbach is done. We'll check the pitching change for the Gators in a moment. Hook'em Horns with a big advantage right now, six nothing over Florida, and the Gators have had to go to the pen again. Their other sidewinder, Darren O'Day. Relieves Connor Falkenbach, who came on here in the sixth and unable to retire anyone. O'Day working for the 34th time in ERA under three. Well, they're both a little bit different. Uh, O'Day will get it up there a little bit harder than Falkenbach. And delivery, it looks like it's in the same location, but it's not quite the same delivery point. I was impressed by his stuff yesterday. Yeah. Now he'll face Peoples, a runner at first. Nobody out. Four runs home in the inning. They've hit two home runs here in the sixth. This will be interesting to watch how O'Day is able to hold the base runner. Most guys that drop down from the side are pretty easy to run on. It takes a long time for that to deliver to develop. the runner ouch plunked Hudson and didn't get far enough away from Laporta for him to advance and try to walk it off yeah that hurt that knocks the wind out of you that hit him right square in the back now here's a good look at it uh, it's right in that, that <laughs> Enough to knock the wind out of you for a second. Strike called. Well, I think the bunt attempt set up this whole half, this whole little confrontation here because you're not thinking the guy's going to steal, but he tried to bunt his way on. So that's the difference in the college game. Now you're going to try to hold him on, and, and you may see him run. Different things happen by just showing that bunt. Peoples cued it off the end of the bat. He's in an 0 and 2 hole. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tonight. Round two of the Subway Series. The Mets and the Yankees also available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN HD. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Bank of America on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. Well, the Yankees just been getting drubbed by people. Need to spend more money on payroll. <laughs> That's not the answer. Oof. In the air to shallow right center. Leclerc drifting with the wind will make the catch second out of the inning. Well, it's painful to watch guys you know are talented oh, not play well. Yeah, they're, they're, that's an interesting uh, thing that's happening in New York. And it's tough. A great group of guys, too. You hate to see people that you respect and you like struggle the way they have. The crazy thing in that division is that the Orioles are in second place now. That's right.
Yeah, they got off to a great, great start. Of course, the qu everybody kept saying, well, that won't last. <laughs> and I guess everybody was right. Stubbs pops this one up. Laporta with a play and makes it, but the damage is done. The Texas Longhorns get home runs from Chance Wheelis and David Marol, and they have amassed a 6 nothing advantage over the Florida Gators. For the senior capitan. I know what's going on here. No low blows. Break when I say break. Go get him. There we go. Oh. Ow. He's bigger, you know, sits yeah. up high and that makes me go up higher. I feel with that. I think it's great to see umpires. Uh, the, the average fan doesn't see them as human beings. They see them as, as umpires. No, absolutely. And I, I, I get asked time and time again, what are some of the conversations like out on the field? And I, I love how we've taken that sound and taken people inside so you can kind of hear. It's not as serious as everybody thinks. You know, everybody's out there trying to enjoy the game and have fun, yet do your job. And I don't know that there's ever been an umpire that that ever did this job that didn't love the game of baseball. That's the that, that's the funny thing is a lot of people think they don't and they love it probably more than anybody. Well, how would you like to never have a home game? No matter what call you make, somebody's going to be upset right. at you. You must really love the game of baseball. Yep. And just to take the abuse game after game after game. And the only time they get any praise is when you're not yelling at them. You know, <laughs> yeah. just the absence of it. <laughs> Everything is their fault. That guy hit that ball out of the ballpark because you missed the pitch before. That's right. Well, Florida desperately needs to get something going here. We have reached the seventh inning. And McCulloch couldn't be better. He is just cruising along. Here in the College World Series, he has yet to allow a run in 13 innings of work and has struck out 14. Well, uh, my memory serves me right. I think last year Windsor threw a complete game for Cal State Fuller in the championship game to wrap the series up. Down to Wheelis. Chance will make the play. One out. <laughs> Today, the numbers on McCulloch, six and a third, only two hits, one of them an infield shot. Struck out seven, only one short of his career high, and it's only given up one walk. And that's been one of the keys for Texas. Their pitchers have had outstanding control, not issued free passes, and then they play tremendous defense behind them. And there's Jay Brent Cox, who may not see any action today. One and one to MacArthur, the young man who got the first hit of the game back in the fifth on a grounder to deep short. Young man who was a fifth round draft choice out of high school chose to come to Gainesville to go to school and is trying to battle his way back from that terrible attack he suffered and the resulting brain surgeries after that. And it's not just the operations, it's the rehab that follows it, especially when you're in a situation where you have to relearn and teach your body how to walk again. Up the middle. Just a nice stab and didn't get him. MacArthur beat it out. His second hit. Wow, what a play. MacArthur motoring, but man, what a play by Seth Davidson to to get to this ball up the middle, it's just Johnson. I'm sorry, it's been around and throw a rocket. 
Boy, now I thought he was distracted by Hudson as well. Yeah, the second baseman who cut across. Play. Tell you, that, that's what I'm talking about. Texas is a sleeper because the shortstop, the first baseman, the third baseman, the catcher. <laughs> that's right. I mean, wow. Second baseman catches everything. The right fielder's crazy out there. The center fielder tracks everything down. The left fielder plays fundamental. What else you want? Not bad. Wow. And the pitching staff has an ERA approaching one in the College World Series. Yikes. Fastball deep left. And that is gone. A home run for LeClaire, who took it the other way and dropped it in the seats. LeClaire had the big home run the other night. And he has had a steady diet of breaking balls. Now the score is six to nothing at the time he was at the plate. He gets a fastball finally. And he's quite very happy to see it because he let it go. 1 0 count, got a fastball, and drove it out the opposite way. The second home run in the College World Series for LeClaire. He has driven in four. Can the Gators continue to find that late inning magic? They did it against Arizona State down three nothing left for dead. They came back to win at six three. This hill is higher to climb. They're still down six two in this one. Gavin Dickey stands in bases empty with a one out and takes a called strike. Tell you what that home run is a momentum changer man when you get that two run homer so innocently done MacArthur with the ground ball up the middle and then bam. And look how big the top of the inning was, or the last inning for Texas, as they get four. And that's why they continue to try to bunt and continue exactly. to try to run. Exactly. Because the game is never out of reach. I mean, there was a time we'd see guys stealing bases up here when they led 10 to nothing, and nobody thought anything about it. Yeah. Because you thought, well, 10 may not be enough. <laughs> <laughs> two and two to Dickey. Struck him out. He matches a career high for Kyle McCullough. That's eight. That shows you a lot about McCullough to come back and still have the poise to go back to his off-speed pitches and do what he's been doing the whole game. He gets a nice little change up for a strike out there. Boy, tough pitch dropping out of the zone around your ankles on the outside part of the plate. Torty now with two out, and nobody on. Well, that two run homer meant the uh, Texas bullpen would see some action, get some people ready. And McCulloch may be tiring a little bit. There's Boone was up earlier. Well, he threw a lot of pitches his first, his last outing, and then today he's up close to. Back up the middle and through for Justin Torty, his first hit of the day. He's got to be close to 100 pitches by now, and they, they are getting some pretty good swings. McCulloch had certainly been dominant until this inning. Well, he's at the 110 pitch mark now. I thought it was close to 100. He's, he's over 100. He's at 110. So, you know, hot day too. Mm-hmm. He's done everything you can ask of him. Get get your club to the seventh inning and get two outs in the seventh. With this bullpen, they should be able to handle this the rest of the way out. Tom Holliday coming out. He has not made the signal yet. And now here comes the change. It will be Randy Boone. And we'll give you the information on him when we come back to the College World Series in Omaha.
Texas leads it 6-2, but the Gators trying to rally here in the seventh. They have scored their first two runs of the ball game and forced a pitching change. Kyle McCulloch is out, and Randy Boone making his first College World Series appearance. Sophomore from Yoakum, Texas, has been in 24 games this year. And he will come on to face Stephen Barton, the DH, and Jay Brent Cox. In case he's needed is warming in the Texas pen. The nation's leader in saves. Justin Torty down at first with two out. Well, if you're wondering what Boone throws, he's got a fastball about 88, 91, 92 in that range. And a, a slider and a curve. So he's another one of those guys that right there you see it. Not afraid to throw the breaking ball and throw it for strikes. If Barton can keep the inning going, we go back to the top of the order for Corsoletti. And the top of the order is where that power lies for this Gator Ball Club. And that's why Augie Garrido's got Jay Brent Cox up right now because he knows if this lineup starts to turn around, you got Laporta sitting down there about three hitters down that you got to make sure you get him, somebody ready to get him out. Takes a strike on a 2 0 count. Barton singled his last time up. Came in as the only player in the Gator lineup hitting 300 or better, and now he is 4 for 12 in the College World Series, hitting 333. Pitcher's pitch there for a called strike two and two. A lot of times when you're around the plate, you're going to get that. That one's too low. Full count and Torty will be able to run with two outs from first. And they're going to play Chance Wheelis off the bag, spin him around with the left-handed hitter. I was wondering if they were going to do that, and they absolutely are, because the runner's going to be running anyway. Here's the payoff pitch, and it's outside. And Randy Boone was halfway to the dugout. Thought he had a called strike. Well, here's what Randy Boone's seeing. Here's the pitch as he delivers it. It didn't make it back. No. The umpire right on top of it. He was bouncing off thinking, I got a punch out. That ball's outside. Boy, if you're Randy Boone, you really don't want to show up the home plate umpire like that. Mm -mm. Jim Garman made the right call. And now it's Corsoletti. One more base runner would bring a potential tying run to the plate. And Corsoletti pops it up on the infield. Wheelis, fair territory. Fighting the sun makes the catch. So Tech, Texas gets out of a jam. Florida rallies for two, but strands two more. And it's six two Longhorns. Six to two, Texas over Florida. The Gators finally come alive offensively, but they had a chance there for a much bigger inning, Harold, than they came through with only the two runs. Yeah, well, that's been the problem for them the last couple of games, really throughout this whole College World Series, coming up with the key hits when you need to. You have to be able to bunch hits together if you're going to win, and they just haven't been able to do that. Texas in the seventh. We'll have Johnston, Crouch, and Wheelis. It's just an outstanding ball club in every sense of the word. They have hit very well out here to go along with the fundamentals that they have shown the ability to sacrifice runners over defense and pitching. And they have, they are the team that has had the timely hitting the entire series. Well, I think also the other thing we, we haven't discussed very much is the fact that these guys have been here four years in a row, and Seth Johnson didn't like that pitch. 
No, he didn't. You usually don't see much of a reaction out of college players. Well, I think he's got a legitimate case on that one. Well, the catcher didn't help either. No, he way, sure did. The way he presented it. No, Jerome hardly framed it. But what I was going to say earlier before that pitch was, you know, anytime you've lost a championship and you get a chance to get back, and this young man right here came back to school for a senior year for an opportunity to win the national championship. It's a big deal, you know, even if the coaches downplay it all they sure. want, it, it's a big deal for these for this group of kids who lost last year and watch Cal State Fullerton and celebrate. And Texas is the only team back from last year's field. Two hops to second base. Adam Davis will throw him out. The first out of the inning. McCulloch was exceptional. He goes six and two thirds, allows two runs, both of them earned in his last inning of work. Was when he was touched up for the two-run homer, struck out eight, which matches a career high and threw 110 pitches. He stands to be the winner, and certainly deserving of that. If that's the way it turns out, he was tough. Crouch has had a tough day with the bat. He's 0 for three. And Crouch, the hottest hitter on this ball club, out here in Omaha. Darren O'Day, the third Gator pitcher, has that one fouled off back in the stands in the right field. We have been so lucky with weather out here normally you'll have two three four five ball games interrupted by rain or really severe weather I mean Nebraska known for some really nasty stuff yeah. early in the summer and we have had one day where we had showers that was it it has been magnificent and that was uh, in the morning and you were hoping it was going to rain <laughs> yeah it was about 99 that day Checked his swing. I think it's interesting the the fan reactions in the stadium because most of us are accustomed to watching Major League Baseball, and the catchers in college they set off so far off the plate that when it, you're used to ball the seeing that hit the catcher you think it's a strike. They set up so far off the plate they're not even close to being strikes and the umpires are getting booed on every pitch because it hits the catcher's glove and he's not moving. <laughs> he's not moving. And he's in the other batter's box. Now you gotta love Texas to wear that hat with the horns on the front. Yeah. I think you have to have a big neck too, don't you? <laughs> yeah. To hold it up. I mean that thing looks like it weighs 20 pounds. Fall away again by Crouch. With Wheelis on deck, who homered his last time up. Chance has had a tremendous College World Series. There's a smaller version, a little softer, perhaps. She's back. I still don't understand that one. <laughs> I do. No. Clearly, we keep showing her every day. This one down the right field line, twisting foul. I mean, first of all, what's in there to hold it up? <laughs> I have no idea. And there's my favorite. He's got the gator hanging off the horn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, hey, this looks good. I don't know how you can do it with that. She's a cute kid. Yes, man. she she's is. Tall, but yes, she is. a crazy hairdo. He's got to go through doors sideways. This one's to shallow center. And Corsoletti calls everybody else off to make the catch. Chance Wheelis, another big day. Defensively stretches that long body, bad shoulder and all to make the play on a ground out that would have left him with runners at first and third and nobody out. Then he follows with a home run to the opposite field. 
as Texas goes up six nothing they're now up six two. Wheelis with two home runs in the College World Series won a walk off shot to beat Baylor and one here this afternoon. And you, you saw the six home runs on the board and, it, and he hit a six today. You're probably wondering well how how's he only have six home runs. Every year teams from Texas have low totals and homers because they play in such a big ballpark in Austin. Swing and a miss on the delivery by O'Day who would four games in the College World Series has won a game saved one and not given up any runs in seven innings pitched a pretty good line. Very good. Very good. Problem hasn't been their pitching. It's no. Good. In past years their pitching might have won them a College World Series as low as their ERA has been but the hitting has just been almost absent the entire series. And if they're going to rally they're probably going to have to do it against Jay Brent Cox. The nation's top closer. A tall order indeed. But this series has produced so many heroes and so many dramatic finishes. Wheelis goes after a high fastball and puts it back on the screen. Well, it's interesting, you know, you, you look at the system that USC football team has in place. You start thinking about what Augie's doing here in Texas. They, you just plug the players in. You're going to bunt, you're going to move them up, here's what you're going to do. And the same thing with SC in football. They're just plugging the guys in, go get them. Popped on the infield. MacArthur will make the catch. That ends the inning, but you're so limited with scholarships in baseball, not quite the same as USC's football program. Back in Omaha, Nebraska for the College World Series, and let's take a look at our Diet Coke game track. Seventh inning, a big one offensively for Texas. Chance Wheelis and David Marol with home runs that broke open a 2-0 game, gave Texas a 6-0 lead, and Kyle McCulloch made everything stand up for most of the ball game. Eventually went six and two thirds, allowed two runs, stands to be the winner in the game clincher of the College World Series. And for more information on the College World Series, all the box scores, the brackets, the quotes, log on to NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Gators down to their last six outs. Two, three, four hitters in the order in this inning. Adam Davis will lead it off. Chopped over the mound. Hudson, nice play. Wow. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier. Is, you know, they catch the baseball, and Robbie Hudson's one of those guys that does that. We convert his shortstop move to second this year, obviously, with Johnston at short. Nice off balance play. I like how he used the glove on that play. When the ball's bouncing like that, you always want to use the glove and not the bare hand. Bare hand when it rolls? The bare hand when it's rolling or stop. And when it's bouncing like that, it's very difficult to do without using the glove. Jay Brent Cox, four games in the College World Series. He has been lights out the way he normally has been all year long, leads the nation in saves. And he would break Houston Street's record for appearances. He is currently tied with 105 in his career if he gets in this ball game. And now Matt Laporta hopes to get something started with one out for the Gators and fouls this at the plate. Well they've done a tremendous job of pitching to Matt Laporta even in this situation he got a 2 0 pitch that was away not really getting challenged and what happens a lot of times it's the people behind you if if they if you don't feel like they're a threat behind you to hurt you with the long ball or right or take advantage of that well, then like your big hitters are going to get pitched around. I think before got us last time. Okay. 
Two balls and a strike. On Laporta with Geraldman to follow. And it's three and one. And Laporta right now has got to be a patient hitter. If they want to pitch around him and put him on, he's got to take it. They need base runners. You're absolutely right. Instead, he goes after a low breaking ball well out of the zone. It's tough to all of a sudden tell a guy who's never told to take a pitch or or to, we need you to get on base to try to be a little more selective and disciplined in a situation. He's used to swinging. But they're basically trying to put him on base. That's right. And he's got to be willing to accept it. That's what's so impressive about Barry Bonds is that he doesn't ever get pitched to. And then when he no, does, he doesn't. he doesn't miss his pitch. You know, it's just very difficult. The mind game of it, okay, are they going to pitch me this time? Are they not? Are they going to waste one? What are they going to do? And he stays locked in. Lost him. So the Gators have a man aboard with one out for Geraldman. It was four for 19 out here in Omaha. He does have a solo home run. Sophomore catcher to be followed by MacArthur if he keeps the inning alive. Jerome takes one out of the strike zone. He is 0 for 3 today. Struck out, a fly to left, and a grounder to first. Really been a better hitter than his numbers all year long. Yes, he really would be a perfect time to, to come through here. And, and you start thinking about MacArthur on deck. This is a situation where they usually pinch hit for him. So you're more than likely going to see a left hander come up next anyway. And I believe this is the time he's heading back to the dugout. Get a little pine time. That's three and one to Geraldman. Well, they're not trying to pitch around this kid. Now's the time to go get outs after you pass Laporta. You're up four runs. You still want your pitcher to be very aggressive and throw the ball over the plate. They hit it out of the ballpark, they hit it out. Geraldman taking all the way. It'll be three and two. And Wheelis playing in behind the runner. Laporta down at first. Wouldn't be surprised they start him right here as far back as he's playing. They do, and it's a base hit to right field. They'll have runners at first and third as Geraldman comes through with a solid single right. Yeah, anytime you back the first baseman off in that situation, it's a good call. It's a gamble. A lot of people think if he's going to hit a line ball, a line drive at you, but they're giving you a base. This keeps you out of the double play. And you go ahead and take any base they're going to give you. That's how you get back in the game. So often teams play to lose when they're in the, in the lead instead of playing to win the game. And now just about anything except the double play would get a run home and make it a three run game. And you've got to chip away at this. I think Let's go to Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Well, Mike Patrick, if you want to know what this moment means to Gator catcher Brian Geraldman, it means the world to him. He told me a couple years ago when he was about 10 years old, which is probably more than a couple years ago, he remembers sitting in the stands in Omaha telling his dad, I hope I'm good enough one day to play here. Guys, he is. Hopefully he's good enough to help his team out along the way. Mike? Well, he certainly came through on that one, Aaron. It was uh, one of the few hard-hit balls that the Gators have had against the Texas pitching staff in two games. And now they're going to go to Jay Brent Cox here in the eighth. Or stick with Randy Boone. Certainly he would be warm and ready. Well, they're giving him some time right now, and that's what this whole conversation is about. 
or a lot of times you'll wait for the umpire to come up there and talk, discuss strikes and balls. Remember last half inning, he started to run off on a pitch he thought was a strike. And now exactly. they go to the pin. Well, he's gone, and Jay Brent Cox will have a chance to increase his national lead in saves and we've already seen him Harold he was sure tough last night well he's got he's got great stuff he's got that fastball now it's six punch outs at, but he scattered him he got a little he fell in love in the stretch there with his breaking pitch he didn't go to the fastball very much and then he got himself in trouble and then he went back to the fastball to set up that slider but he's got two tilts on the slider one real hard and another one looks like a curveball but he's got electric stuff I think we said at one point last night the first inning he came in his pitch selection was about five or six to one breaking balls as opposed to fastballs the next inning he came back out you saw a lot more heaters yeah I think he got a little tongue lashing from the coaching staff saying let's go now you got too good a fastball to throw a breaking pitch every time out there Cox Three years and a record 106 appearances to Houston Street. He's still chasing that saves record. My name is Jay Brent Cox, the closer, University of Texas. Houston Street, best closer of all time in college baseball. I can't say enough about him. He's a great guy and great baseball player, even more than that. We talked a lot about the middle game of baseball, and he taught me the most important outs at first out in the ninth inning. It's been a huge motivation for me. Luxury to have played with a guy like that on the same staff, and you're able to look at their numbers right now. But, but more than anything, to be able to compare knowledge and notes with each other. Cox tonight gets his 106th career appearance, which is a record. He has 18 saves. That's number one in the nation. A reliever by the name of Charlie Thames has the school record for saves in the year with 19. Cox comes in here with 18. Well, I don't know if it's a record or not, but Houston Street may have the, the quickest arrival in the big leagues as any Texas pitcher. He got there awful quick. I yes, mean, faster than Roger Clemens did. He's already in the major leagues this year pitching with Oakland A's. And I got, think Coach? Jay Brent Cox has an opportunity to do the same thing with the Yankees. Well, you talked to a couple of people who said Cox is, is pretty much ready to go right now. He, uh, he's ready. You know, Greg Swindells, who on this coaching staff here at Texas, he played with Clemens, he played with Geraldi, he played in the major leagues for 15 years. I asked him point blank, you think the kid is ready right now? He said, absolutely. And he said the biggest thing is he can handle it. And that's, that's more importantly, maybe more important than the stuff, is mentally can you handle everything? They go to Cox. Bryson Barber will come on to pinch hit from MacArthur. If he gets on, it would bring the tying run to the plate. And guess who that would be? LeClaire, who homered his last time up. And who can hit anybody. One and one to Bryson Barber. Well, that's a pitch we hadn't seen. Looked like a little bit of a changeup. May not be the Gators' last chance, but it looks like their best breaking pitch right there for a called strike. Matt Laporta, the first baseman, is down at third. Geralaman, the catcher who singled him there, is at first. Cox struck out all six batters he retired last night. And make it seven in a row. Well, that's a nasty pitch to hit right there. That's a slider just busting in on your hands. And what makes that so difficult, the ball starts out over the plate, and when you start your swing, before you know it, it's back in, and that's a hard break. It's not a curveball, it's a slider, and the difference with a slider and a curveball is a curveball, you see a big loop, and you see it, you can see it almost in the arm action. A slider comes out of your hand looking like a fastball. And the left-hander simply can't make an adjustment on that swing. LeClaire, who hit his 15th home run, Back in the seventh inning. Could make this a one run game with one swing of the bat. Might be tough to get it out to right because that's 
the predominant wind blowing to left and this one is fouled down the left field line drops harmlessly. Well here's what you're talking about Mike he's got that ability to go the other way and that was a fastball he drove the opposite field. Now he hit a home run in the game earlier in the College World Series his other home run and that was to right field again a fastball. He has yet to really show what he can do against a breaking pitch. That's why I think they'll continue to stay with breakers on him. One and one from Jay Brent Cox. Oh, he just missed that. That was a curveball again. A little slider. Ball and two strikes to Brian LeClaire, the sophomore. Now, Cox got him with a hard slider in underneath his hands last night. Let's we'll see if he goes back to that pitch. Outfield playing him around the left. Not expecting him to pull Cox. Fighting off that fastball. I think he's set up real real good for that slider down and in. But he's battling. And if you keep it out over the plate, I think he's gonna hit him. But if he gets it down, if he gets it in hard on the hands, he's not gonna hit it. Hit hard right to the shortstop, and Johnson with that sure glove gets the fourth at second base. Jay Brent Cox trying to hold the fort for the Longhorns. Augie Garrido has become as much philosopher as baseball coach. And it's 6 2 Texas over Florida here in the eighth. Winning a fifth national championship belongs to the players. All national championships are won by the players on the field, not the coaches. My hope is that the baseball gods will smile kindly and be gentle to them and reward them with a the national championship. They fought hard for it. And uh, I hope that happens for him. It would be the sixth in Texas baseball history. It would be the fifth for Augie Garrido, two at Texas. He has won one back in 02 after winning the uh, first three at Cal State Fullerton. He's won one at Texas. And 2002 this would be number five tying him for second on the all time list and new third baseman Matt Gasky the familiar defensive replacement for Brandon MacArthur. Well this is a move they make all year long and one of the reasons they make that move is because we talked about Brandon MacArthur earlier he still has not fully caught up baseball wise to everybody else and and when you sit out a year and a half and you go through operations he went through, it's a miracle he's even out here playing right now. And so they make that defensive change pretty much every ball game. I, that's, that's still one of the most amazing stories in sports. It is. To me. He's, he's still, playing with plate still got head. a long way to go, but uh, you, you get the feeling with what he has already come back from. He's he's going to reach the end of that road. Man. Well, a lot of people I want to thank today, Harold Reynolds, Aaron Andrews, Kyle Peterson, our producer, Aaron Owen, Scott Johnson, our director, the guys who do such great work on our stats up here, Mark Meadow and Dave Dare, and just dozens and dozens of other people who have put in so much time and effort and shared their skills with us. And Janice may be the only person who's been coming out here as long as I have. And I think a couple of years longer. And Janice, uh, one of the outstanding cameramen in the country, camera ladies, women, camera person, camera person. Okay. Uh, see, we got a good shot right there, Janice. We got cameras shooting, cameras shooting, cameras. This ball is drilled but fouled down the right field line by Taylor Teagarden. Taylor Teagarden has lived up to his billing too. He's up hasn't for the, he? Up for the Johnny Bench Award, the top college catcher in the country. He's been very impressive. Two hits tonight and six for 13 in Omaha. 
after hitting near 330 all year. Foul back out of play. Darren O'Day has been very impressive when we have seen him come out of the pen for the Florida Gators. Well, yes, they have. He's been, he's kept his team where he needs to keep them. And, and they've had a couple chances their last few at bats to, to get back in the ball game. And that's foul outside third past the diving Matt Gasky. How often have we seen it where a player comes in the game and I tell you what the ball is going to find you. You better All be time. ready. Mm -mm -mm. But it's almost unusual if it's hit to a guy who comes in for his defense. Yeah. Down to Gasky at third gobbles it up and throws across one out. I mean, are, are the coaches that good? <laughs> are they that good? Probably. I guess so. Somebody knows something about that. Pat McMahon will have his team back here. It's the Gators' first crack at the College World Series. Chance to win a championship in the final best two out of three. Augie Garrido, of course, become a fixture here. Carson Kiner big swing and a miss. Well you give a lot of these guys four years and say that you want them in Omaha. Pat McMahon has done it now. Augie Garrido did it at Texas. The good ones are going to make it. And it with these type of programs and resources that they have they're going to get here. And that's why those jobs are so so valuable and they, they become open so infrequently. Well, you go try to get the best and let them do their job. Yes, you did. Couldn't check his swing and two gone. Now Marol with another chance to hit. He homered his last time up. And Marol, five for seven, two home runs, and six RBIs in the championship series. In the College World Series overall, Harold Reynolds' sleeper pick. For future stardom is seven for 15 and eight RBIs while he's been in Omaha. Well, a lot of times you like to see how a guy reacts to the best competition. And he reacts and pretty well. Pretty doggone good. But I, you know, I looked at the first day he made a play and he ran so far to his left, I was like, goodness gracious, there's not guys in the big leagues that have this kind of range. This one hit off the end of the bat. And Johnston can't come up with it. I mean, he's got tremendous range, and then he throws 94 miles an hour from the mound. So the things you look at, look at the range right here. You look at foot speed and arm strength right there. And then the next thing you want out of a guy from the corner is does he have any power? You know, the average is going to come, but those are things you can't teach. And, Absolutely. And I, I just. I, I'm astounded that he went to the 23rd round. It's amazing to me. 6'3, 215 pounds. 6'1, 215 pounds. Wow. Marole gets the base hit his third of the day off the glove of Justin Torty. And now Hudson will have a chance to hit. Marole now 8 for 16. Two bombs, eight driven in. He scored three. And as we said, anything hit to third, he's had. <laughs> I was just laughing because the coaches know their kids, man. And, and I, Augie Greedo said, Robbie Hudson is swinging. Start the arm, he's swinging. <laughs> and he does. He is. He's not going to get cheated. I mean, if you would want to walk, walk Robbie Hudson, it would take some effort. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost like you have to roll it. He might be swinging <laughs> if you roll it. <laughs> Jammed him with a fastball. What did Manny Sanguin say? He said, you don't walk off the island, you come swinging.
tipped into the glove of Brian Geraldman for the strikeout. The inning is over. We have played eight full. We'll go to the ninth, and the Gators down to their last three outs. They are trailing by four. Well, we have had tremendous comebacks, Harold. Every single ball game, every single game has been exciting. The Gators have one more in them. But it's going to be awful difficult with Jay Brent Cox out there. And you're starting to the bottom part of the order. I think Texas is going to wrap this thing up today. Sadly, I wanted to see a game three, but I really think Jay Brent Cox is going to be a little bit too much this half inning. But I've been wrong. Baylor will tell you that. Uh, they have, yes, they <laughs> will. Let's take a look at our Pontiac game changing performance. And Kyle McCulloch, who was absolutely sparkling on the mound, dominated. Gave up two runs before he was taken out of the ball game. Stands to be the winner in a game that would clinch a national championship. And Texas, as a staff, has been absolutely magnificent. Adrian Alanis, Kyle McCulloch, Ken Kasparic, and Jay Brent Cox out of the bullpen. Lights out. There's nothing else to say about it. They have just been shut down pitchers. And two of them are freshmen, Al Alan Ayes and Kasparic, both freshman pitchers. I mean, that's incredible to have those guys at that early young experience and still be able to come back and shut people down. Bottom third of the order is going to have to come through for the Gators or pinch hitters in their stead. Dickey, Torty, and Barton are the scheduled hitters. The numbers on McCullough struck out a career tying eight men. And we're going to see Andy Davis lead it off for the Florida Gators. Tough to come off the bench when you haven't had many at bats and face Cox. Well, you're not kidding, especially when you're, you're down four runs. The philosophy is, hey, take a strike. Then you find yourself in a hole. Fortunately for him, he's got he's up on a count 2-0 now. Now three. Lost him on four pitches. Unusual for Jay Brent Cox. A little extra adrenaline flowing, and that's why this little stroll off the mound is a little settling down a little bit. Shortstop Justin Torty will come up. Uh, Augie Garrido, you saw motioning, look for the bunt in this situation. I still think Torty's got to be taking a strike and work him. He and certainly he won't be bunting for a sacrifice. It'll be trying to get a hit all the way if he does. Torty singled his last time up, takes that one outside. It looks like Jay Brent Cox is just getting the ball and going. He's in too much of a hurry. He needs to settle down and just think about throwing strikes one pitch at a time. Hit hard toward third. Moreau to second on to first double play. Moreau has been in sensational. The entire series made a perfect throw to Hudson who completed the pivot for a 5-4-3 double play. This is all set up with the third baseman. Watch how quick he gets rid of this ball and throws a strike across the diamond to set Hudson up for the double play. You love that as a second baseman. If someone can get you the ball quick and allow me to make the transfer. Two gone and Barton is the last hope for the Gators. He has walked and singled today. And just when you think Cox might be in a little bit of trouble, he gets the double play ground ball to get out of it. Will it be Augie Garrido's fifth national championship? Will it be the number six for the Texas Longhorns? On 
partisan Texas crowd here in Omaha has seen their club win the first game. They lead this one 6 2 in the ninth. Two outs, nobody on for the Gators. Two balls, two strikes to Barton. Throughout the 10, 11 days we have been here, they were clearly the best team in Omaha. A lot of people didn't think so when they came. As we said, they were talking about other teams, but the way they played, they had the best club. Well, there's no doubt about it. And, and the, the beauty of it is they took you back to how baseball is supposed to be played. You bunt, you pitch, you catch the baseball, you win. And that's what Texas was able to do in this series. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. She has one of the stars, David Marol. Aaron. He certainly does. The guy that you guys have been talking about this entire College World Series. Your head coach, Augie Garrido, told me the postseason is when you perform at your best. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. My, just something about it, I guess. Just gets me going a little bit more than usual. But I don't know. It's, it's fun. With everything your team went through last year, losing to Cal State Fullerton, what is this experience like? It's awesome. It's a lot better than last year's outcome, but I don't know. It's exciting right now. I don't really know what to say. Augie Garrido talks about how losing in the College World Series is a learning experience. You took what you had last year. What did you learn to apply to this year? Uh, I don't know. Just play every day as hard as you can. Go out there and do what you do, and that's about it. David Morrall, a little overcome there. Go celebrate with your team. Mike? All right, thanks, Aaron, very much. And another star, a guy who just shut down the Gators' offense the entire game, Kyle McCulloch, is with Kyle Peterson. Hey, Kyle McCulloch, great ball game today. What do you think was the key to your success today? Uh, well, I mean, I was just trying to change speeds and get ahead of hitters and, you know, go from there. And I think I did a good job, and they're a great team, and they deserve all the credit in the world. You were here last year with this Texas club, but you didn't pitch. How did that factor in this experience this year? Well, I mean, I think it's just, you know, another year in making and made it that much more sweet. This approach today, you saw Adrian Alaniz last night. Did you learn anything from his outing last night that helped you today? Yeah, I, just, I saw how he got ahead of hitters, and I was just trying to do the same thing, just get ahead and try and put them away. Kyle, nice job. Thank you. Good. Kyle, thanks very much. And for Texas, national championship number six in college baseball. That is second only to USC with a dozen. And LSU and Arizona State now tied for third with five. Tip of the cap to Jay Brent Cox as well in the College World Series. Five games, he saved two, won one, went 10 and a third innings, gave up only three hits, no runs, and struck out 12. I think your evaluation that he's ready for Major League Baseball right now might be correct. He, he looks ready for anything. Well, there's been, I've been coming here about five, six years. There's been two other pitchers that have stood out like that. Mark Pryor and Houston Street. They're both in the big leagues now, and they got there quick, and I think this young man right here is on the same fast track. Get Back to the stuff. field, more from Aaron Andrews. Aaron. He's going to the trophy. All right, they're going to go to the uh, trophy presentation. And David Marole, we understand, has won the Jack Deasing Senior Most Outstanding Player of the 2005 College World Series. And that's a great choice. He was sensational, both with a bat in his hand and wearing that glove down at third base. Sorry. 
six to two was the final. As Texas sweeps the best two out of three from the Florida Gators, a team that has nothing to feel bad about because they had a magnificent season. They had to go to Tallahassee to advance here to the College World Series and beat Florida State there, and they did it. That is no small feat. And Pat McMahon has such a wonderful ball club. He gets really good kids. And he is an outstanding baseball guy. He'll have him back. You can guarantee you can be guaranteed of that. Well, I love his perspective he has with the kids too and, and his plan of recruiting, the way they try to go about it. And you'll see the Gators again, no doubt. Final was six to two. Of course, you're gonna see the Texas Longhorns again too, because Augie Garrido is not about to slow down. And now we'll go down to the field level. Let's join PA announcer Bill Jensen. Texas have been waiting for. Congratulations to the Texas Longhorns, their sixth national championship trophy. I now hand this mic over to Charlie Carr, chairman of the Division I Baseball Committee. Thank you, Aaron. On behalf of the Division I Baseball Committee, the NCAA, Omaha, and the College World Series, we truly appreciate and thank the way the Texas Longhorns have played this series. <laughs> Guys, you truly represent what is really good about college baseball. We appreciate your efforts, and again, congratulations on a well-deserved championship. You were standing in the loser's dugout. What does this do for you this year? Well, it uh, is a great tribute to the University of Texas, the fans, alumni, and um, the play most of all, the players themselves. I'm really happy for them. You had a lot of few, a couple of players that actually returned to Texas so they could do just this, win a national championship. What do those players mean to you? They mean everything. Uh, the relationships are the most important part of the whole business, and uh, I hope this will be an everlasting and meaningful uh, time in their life. This is your fifth national championship, your second with the Longhorns. What memory do you take from this, Augie? Uh, we're looking for a shortstop for next year. That's your memory? <laughs> it's my recruiting speech. <laughs> Not bad in front of all these people. Guys, we'll send it up to you. Aaron, thanks very much. The final score here in Omaha. Texas has beaten Florida for the national championship. Six to two. Sports Center has been coming up. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. It has taken nine days, 15 games, and extraordinary moments to crown the champion. It's been a privilege to be here. We can only count the days until we come back home to Omaha. Stands in the general would appreciate Carpenter's man-to-man -man defense. Carpet, Rob McCobiak you know, swinging. Next batter, Daryl Ward flailing. Chris Carpenter Next up, putting Jose Castillo and like that. Look at that he'll leave as well. Right Carpenter here. strikes out the side of the second. 5-0 cards in the seventh. Albert Pools, and you're so not catching that. Cutting quickly through the humid summer air in St. Louis, 20th of the season for Pools, fifth straight season in which he's hit 20. 
Jack Wilson, Tyke Redman also go down. Carpenter struck out 11. He's 4 and 1 with an 090 ERA for the month of June. So, as for interleague's final weekend of the season, 14 big league cities host.